Hello and welcome to another episode of the Plus 6 3 HP podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Strong Clemente. Alongside with me is my bestest best friend in the entire world, Jabax. How are you doing, brother? Ah, well, one of those weeks, but still alive. That's the most important part. We are alive. Um, and if this is your first time hopping onto our channel, thank you very much for the view. We really, really appreciate it. We'd actually love it if you'd go to youtube.com slash plus six three HP, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, maybe hit that notification bell as well, because we have multiple shows dropping every week. This show, our review show, drops every Mondays and Tuesdays where we discuss, deep dive, and provide our opinions on one movie or one episode or a few episodes of a TV series that is, that is in the zeitgeist. Uh, we give our ratings so you can know whether you and your friends and family should watch it as well. Uh, on Wednesdays, we drop our D&D show, our very, very first campaign as middle-aged old men. Uh, we are having a blast. Our first <laughs> campaign is almost a year and a half now. It's been great. Um, those episodes drop every Wednesday. On Thursdays, we have a curated list of trailers, short videos, featurettes, and clips. Uh, we watch it together. We react to it uh, live, and we give our little hype meter, whether we are plus on it, if we are going to watch it, or we want to watch it, or mm -hmm. we're a minus, if we're going to skip on the content that's coming down the pipeline. On Fridays, Chibax and our other bestest best friend, RJ, can't get enough of TND, so they spun their second campaign where they're bad guys. Those drop every Friday. So you have pretty much new content dropping every day or almost every day during the week. Hopefully you can join us and support us so we can make more content uh, and develop a community of like-minded people who just likes watching fun stuff with their friends and family. Yes, Housekeeping sir. Again. This week... Uh, we have, uh, you know, our usual episodic discussion of the amazing show Last of Us, uh, based uh, adapted from a video game on HBO Max. But as the movie of the week, we were very excited to discuss the super awesome Megan, Megan. M3 Gen. All right, what was like? Um, I saw like a tweet, three? like. Uh... What are they gonna do for the sequel? How are they gonna title the sequel in the in the in the third one? It was too bad. It was, I, I I was I hope it was going to be M three G four N, right or something like that. Just add one, but I think it's just like Megan two point oh. Mega M three G two N. M two G A N. Um, but yeah, I think it. Uh, from what I've heard, it's only just going to be Megan two point oh. Um, a little uh, stats. Oh, uh, well, before we go into the stats of the show and the synopsis, so we, we can discuss what we like and what didn't like about it. Uh, non spoilery for those who haven't seen Megan and want to like maybe pause this podcast, go watch it, and come back and see if you uh, think the same about our opinions about the movie. Trebox, what is your non spoilery review uh, when you watch Megan? Uh, I liked it. I love megan the the character but the movie was only so so for me maybe I, I liked it maybe that's as far as i'll go okay uh i i think it was kind of exactly what i expected um but i was pleasantly surprised not necessarily about the effects or the movie or the plot or the acting but it's just like it looked polished mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. they, they didn't overstay their welcome the the uh android lab or where uh, the lead character allison williams was working wasn't you know extremely um uh futuristic so it's kind of uh you know he didn't have to stretch them there uh the house of allison williams is fine the effects the goriness was just enough that it's not too campy but it's also slightly realistic so everything happens like all right everything was just you know it did not overstay its welcome it was 102 minutes so under two hours mm -hmm. you know so that was no, that, that, that helped better yeah helped a lot so it was like it was um you know, jokes were funny. Uh, things that you see was was great. So it's like, oh, all right, this was really good. Like I was expecting a light, easy, 
uh, movie to watch. And because it was uh, short and sweet, I enjoyed it even more. All right. So that was my non-spoilery review of Megan. I'm going to give a little bit of stats and we're going to, you know, Chibox is going to um, like uh, wing the synopsis and we're going to discuss all the things that we like and not like about it. So it was directed by Gerard John, John, Johnstone. Johnstone. Um, hasn't, uh, he's a, a, a new, New Zealand, uh, a, a Kiwi, a Kiwi screenwriter and director. Not a lot of IMDb behind him, but he has this, uh, uh, he has a sitcom in New Zealand, the Jackie Brown show. And he had one film, House Bound, before he did make it. The story and screenplay writer, though, is Akela Cooper. So he's, you know, the, uh, Akela um, has similar uh movies mm -hmm. under their belt like they have malignant so also bloom house okay. also Love short that. sweet fun uh none so all of the that yeah. that that they so it has some pedigree on the yeah. horror uh psychological thriller kind of movies he's also yeah they've also finished writing megan 2.0 it mm -hmm. is already scheduled to to um come out uh, launch in 2025 um and uh, one of the things that uh, was uh, important for Akela Cooper, he was like named Variety's 10 screenwriters to watch for in 2021. So, all right, you know, solid writing scheme, you know, um, uh, because it's Blumhouse, because it's horror. James Wan is one of the uh, uh, people that uh, produced uh, also had a hand in the story as well. So good pedigree. Mm -hmm. Um it stars Allison Williams of Girls fame, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where everybody knows her about. Um, I really get out. like her look. Get out. Oh, get out. She is the the one that was segregating her, her, her um, Fruit Loops in, in different colors. Great. Um, I just really like how she looks. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She, she, uh, the little girl is Violet McGraw. Uh, Ronnie Chang of... of uh, uh, Comedy Central's The Daily Show. There, he's also just, the. I love the way he speaks. He's as okay. If I'm not mistaken, he's Malaysian or it's Singaporean. Not, it's not just the accent; it's just the way he says the word. Oh yeah, it's very clear and very cool. He's he's a great um he's a great comedic actor. He's a great comedian, but also there's some gravitas of seriousness around him. So I like how I like, I like his movies that he seems to be popping up from here. And there. Um, Megan uh, themselves uh, is played by uh, Amy Donald. Of course, there is um, a prosthetics around mm -hmm. her, um, but the, the physicality of Megan, the, the Android doll is by, uh, young child contortionist Amy Donald, but voiced by Jenna Davis. So, um, who's the, the voice? Is different. Uh, Jenna Davis. She has no listings. I was probably somebody's kid somewhere. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. And uh, uh, as mentioned, um, it's under Bloomhouse Production, so they pump out a lot of like solid psychological thriller horror movies mostly to show they're mostly direct to tv but you know they've had some solid hits across the years as well right um so bloom house is one of those places where like all right if it's from bloom house it's a quality horror show it's not going to be a campy mm. slasher or whatnot it's going to be and something that... always unique not, not it's not like uh no normal normal stuff yeah they try to have some uh, new angles in terms of usual horror tropes. Uh, yeah, it was released in December seventh. Uh, in uh, you know, in select theaters, January sixth in the entire United States because of really, really good reception. As mentioned, hundred two minutes, super easy. It's kind of like a, it's an episode of fucking uh, uh, Last mm -hmm. of Us if if you th think about it. Mm -hmm. Here's the cool thing: the reason why this was immediately greenlit as with a second movie and in in, in um, already has like a, a, a release date. Um, the budget of the movie, guess. Take a guess. 20? How much? Lower. $12 million. Wow. And because fucking Megan wasn't CGI. How much did it earn? 
$171.6 million in the Man. box office. So this is all that's 10 times as much. And then if we're going by our, our um, or Hollywood's normal standards of if your budget, if you your box office is two two times the budget or mm-hmm. total three gets it three times, then that's a successful. This is 10 times. So it's very, very successful. So okay. one, one second, something's in my eye. Okay, we're back. We're back. Those are oh, the quick are stats of M3 again. Model 3 generation Android. Uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Shabax. We're going to discuss quickly the synopsis and what we thought about the movie Megan. Yeah, so we start um, with Megan and uh, her very irresponsible parents driving <laughs> in the snow. And it's not like... Uh, it's not like your drizzling snow. It's like full on, full on deep, deep. Uh, you need lizard to snow plows, um, type, uh, No I visibility. Don't I don't know where they were going. I think like a vacation, and yeah, the parents were not. Uh... It's not that they were just your spot. It's like the whole their setup wasn't like showing much confidence of them as <laughs> being parents, and. Uh, they get into an accident, snow plows them. Like a nice so little subversions here where you think they're gonna crash, but they did stop. They were mm-hmm. trying to be safe, so there is that, but then the, it was the snow plow that hit yeah. them. I don't know how sure. fast snow plows go though. No, I well again, I am living in New York. I've experienced a lot okay. of snowstorms. You you will not be crushed by a snow plow. Right? Especially with no. that thick of snow. It has to be it, slow, you know. It's definitely going to be slow, and you will you will see them a mile away, like yeah. because of the the lights. That's the that's their thing, because mm-hmm. they're the ones trying to clear the roads. But again, this is kind of one of those things where I guess mm-hmm. I'm sure if we look it up, somebody's died by a snowplow accident. So I'm sure, I'm sure. But Shit, if Jeremy Renner is like <laughs> got well, got look, Jeremy with. Renner was. I I don't know how true the stories were, but. He was trying to save. Yeah, his a nephew. Your niece. Yeah, yeah. That's why. Yeah, all right. So, real Hawkeye hero then. So, uh, so she, KD, the the little girl who survives, gets sent to uh her aunt, and of course the aunt is a budding uh roboticist toy, toy, toy designer, thing, toy designer, uh, very overqualified for her job. <laughs> Uh, but uh, I just love the line here where um, she asks where the toy that she sent her. <laughs> that seemed like very insensitive. Like it wasn't a fucking accident. But yeah, she it, it was very realistic the setup. You know, she's your typical bachelorette, uh, career um, driven, career driven, and then she gets stuck with a with a uh, with a, her niece. But then um, it does come in a nice time because they're trying to look for the next big thing, and she has like a, she's trying to make a, a a learning doll that's like almost that's life size, and um, and she uses another really crazy like I I. I I see it really happening, but it's also like in hindsight, like why would you think that was a good idea? Like using her niece with the with the new toy, the experimental toy, and bonding her in, and using her niece's grief in a way. I mean, I guess she she, she thought that it could help her niece as well. So you know, there's like she didn't have any other stone. choice. Like she didn't know how to take care of a kid. Mm-hmm. She she saw a way out. This was, yeah, she's. And totally no, uh, uh, totally unexpected how this was going to be happening, right? Mm. So, you know, she didn't. She did. <laughs> my favorite part was like it's it's somewhat like us where you know somebody will will play with a a, a display, yeah, 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 yeah. Not a toy to display. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, so, um, so yeah, so that's the one thing that connected her with her niece. So it's like she rolled with it, but. Uh, I was like, stand up for yourself or me like, oh, it's a display. I'll just get her a new toy. You know, it's like, I don't have to open this shit up. <laughs> it's all expensive. 
that was true too, but also like she didn't even know to feed the girl. So she didn't even like she didn't even I don't think she thought about getting actual toys for her, but yeah. yeah. So anyway, she knocked two birds with one stone by, you know, trying to help her niece by also helping her work. So she got the the Megan the robot Mega the uh, how do you call it again? Model three Model generation. Three generation. Okay. So she got that working, but it, the the like the new big thing about her is that she learns and she adapts to her user. So she was testing it out with her niece, and uh, again over overly qualified. Like, why is she working in a uh, in a toy company when the shit that she's made is like probably super soldier? Well, because the toy company makes money. <laughs> super Real soldiers, scientists don't. Super soldier stuff like. Uh, I'm sure that the uh, defensive, the Department of Defense would love to get hands on this shit. But uh, yeah, at first I was like, uh, uh, not only did she break break molds in the AI area, but like also the robotic body. But then I, I thought it was like a little too much at first. But then I real I remember the the big robot. Thing. Oh yeah, what's so, his name so again? It's like Brian. They, yeah, so it means like they at least they sh- kind of set, showed it that there's already other basis for the body. You know, they just made it smaller and you know up, more updated, but it was the AI that was lacking. But um, remind me, what was the like the breakthrough of her that that like when she tested it first with uh, the name of uh, Ronnie Chang, David. CEO. And the, mm-hmm. the, the the thing that exploded, so it oh, wasn't working. Yeah. And then she talked to her niece, and then she she got like an uh, eureka moment, and then was able to do it on her own. I, I couldn't. Fuck. I can't remember. Let me check. I totally forgot about that. Yeah, but yeah, you're right. There was a, a moment where, um, like Bruce were, is the robot. Yeah, Bruce. Like they were talking. She was talking with her two friends about. Um, how to hasten the, um, the robotics? But yeah, I forget. Yeah. So anyway, so she's able to complete the project, and they start uh going to get um. She starts um pairing Katie with Megan. So yeah, you. This is, I just um. So the story may not be like something write home about but everything about me was really well done well done. at first i was like they could have just made her look more human but then more human but then that's the point she didn't she was off um the mouth wasn't syncing up with the words so much which is perfect which is really it drives home how eerie it is combined with the and that life and that's what eyes. yeah that, that and the, like, the in in most like real doll moments that we're having in real life, the mouth is actually one of the hardest um like muscles to replicate because the lips, mm-hmm. which is the end of the uh is literally the, the, the most useless. Most of our speech is all the way from our, our the entire mouth, the jaw, the tongue. And the the tongue box. kind of protrudes yeah. like all the way like six inches back of your throat to produce particular sounds in your music. So I actually appreciate appreciated that they didn't attempt mm-hmm. to make it closer. I know because they just made that. Yeah, just we're gonna fucking dub it anyway, right? And so it, it, it was makes perfect. sense. It's creepy, mm-hmm. and uh, the way she moves, the way sometimes she just she glitches and the voice sounds off. Mm-hmm. It, it just makes more sense, like uh, the way she walks. They could have just been lazy and made it like you know uh, somebody dressed in as Megan and just walking and killing. But they they really made the point that you know she's not human. You know the the her movements, uh, the way. Um, so anyway, so Katie bonds with Megan a lot and makes Megan's primary use is to protect Katie and. But the the therapist that Katie seeing talks to uh, Gem, uh, Gemma and saying attachment theory. You know she needs to grow. She needs to recover, not to get stuck with this with this thing. 
so they, she brings her to an alternative school out in the forest. <laughs> Where another uh, again going going in pairs in the forest. Those young I, I, I in again, this is they really literally wrote it for the movie bit, but I mean in any school you're not gonna let anybody wander off on their own, regardless of how big or small that group that is. In the right. in the forest and as we know, there's access to the road because that's what happened. So anyway, so yeah. there's this guy, Bully, with the mom who's like the most clueless mom in, in the world. And uh, he bullies uh, Katie, gets the doll, and then Megan... Oh, it's, this is after the dog, right? So anyways, they have an encounter mm-hmm. with the neighbor's dog and she gets bitten in the neck. Megan, I don't know if that's what made her malfunction more. That's one of, the, that's one of those things that... Um... You know, it kind of maybe that's the reason why she shorted and yeah. started teaching itself. To, but you, you, you you'd know. think uh, this being a test phase, those programmers would have been checking her every night. And, you know, maybe uh, and uh, oh, or maybe Megan, yeah, was able to bypass it, but still. So with the bully, um, she goes uh uh, the bully hides uh Megan while uh. Um, Katie's looking for her, and then Megan uh, tears his ear off. Her cries, that was really cool. The way she, the way she stood up, and then run out, runs after him in that like crawly, creepy way. And all fours, which is great. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, he she he dies by falling off a uh, the little cliff down to the road and gets smacked by a uh, by a car. So. Uh, that was uh, and then um, Megan also kills the dog of the neighbor, and mm. because she, he it bit Katie and also kills the the owner of the dog because well she was harassing them for missing the, looking for the dog. Yep. So yeah, we got nice moments. You know, sometimes there's some moments where you really see how useful she is. Yeah, you know? that's a good thing about it. Like uh, access to the internet, making her able to. You do first aid, everything else. Teaching, um, teaching, teaching uh, Katie. Katie in a way that is not, you know, condescending, but also not school. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's like you put your coaster, like, you know, it's like even just like small touches, like putting the drink on the table without a coaster. And then one is teaching them why you should put it in a coaster. And two is like what happens on con- what condensation is, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. It's like, cool. Like, uh... All right. So I'd probably anyways, yeah. Megan. Megan, you know, uh, Gemma starts becoming uh, um, suspicious. Deactivates Megan, brings her to the building uh, just before their launch. So David's going crazy because they're about to announce this 10,000 characteristic. Um, and then uh, Gemma's mom, mom instincts starting to in, 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 uh, kick in. So she's start now worried about uh, Katie more. So she brings her home, leaves uh, um, Megan Ronnie with the text mm-hmm. you know, in the building. Uh, she escapes. Um, I'm not sure if she kills those two, the, the, the two co-workers. I, I don't think they, they, she, they, she just starts a fire. Yeah, but I uh, think they them survive, not, right? They survive they could, at the end. They could yeah. probably survive. I hope they bring it down. It would be better if they have... Oh yeah, I think hopefully it's more of like a, a group effort now. Yeah. But she kills Ronnie Chang, David, and tries to make it look like uh, the assistant did it. And then she goes home and attempts to uh, work it out with Gemma and Katie. But of course, Gemma's not having it, so they have a fight. Uh, and in the end, Katie sides with Gemma and they defeat uh, Megan. Uh, but uh, I think uh, it made it look like Megan uploaded herself to uh, their Siri or their like Amazon type device, the one that uh, is like uh, their Echo, their Echo, their Google Home, <laughs> their Google Home. So yeah, there it is. Um, so like my initial uh, critics here is like um, there's just not enough kills. That that, that was one for me because what. what What's her, what's her real kill? It was only... Uh, the kid. Well, not even the kid, because the kid fell. And, and, uh, well, and oh, okay. The car. 
So it's just really the the neighbor and Ronnie. Ronnie can- yeah, that's about mm-hmm. it. So that th- that's where I'm. I, I'm what's missing. Uh, I just wish there was. Maybe they could have made the uh, Gemma's family bigger, or I don't know somebody, or maybe, maybe they could have emphasized more on uh, on the assistants, and then they killed him more in a more, you know, interesting way. In the assistants, you know, like you said, we're not even sure if they're dead, but um, but yeah, the the, the house fight was, I I I really like the house fight. Now that I'm thinking about it, um, I remember but, what that what's that movie with um. With Hugh Jackman, Real Steel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was cool with Bruce. Uh, yeah, I uh, again, like I said, I I enjoyed the movie. I thought it was just enough kills because I was thinking if there were more people dying around Megan, we wouldn't have realized how scary sentient she has been. The main complain I have about AI stuff and robot stuff is they 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 really gloss over the idea how these things are untethered, right? Yeah. I, I, if it's I also thought I, about like how they didn't explain how she went from KD is my world to me. Like they kinda jumped over that what like you know like true. if, if exactly. she was really yeah. programmed to to have KD as her world, she wouldn't. I actually would have liked it even better if, if, if KD was fighting her and she wouldn't fight back because KD, you know, or at least explain why yeah. she would fight, why, why she became her primary, her own primary user. The the uh, for me the one thing that I kind of take issue the most and the only kind of major uh, complaint about the movie. Every single robotics person, every single AI person has read Isaac Asimov's The Foundation. Mm -hmm. You know, basic, basic, basic rules of AI. You know, thou shall not harm, you know, thou shall not do anything that will cause somebody else harm. That's super basic. And what? Fucking Gemma, this rock star, um, ro- roboticist, designer, uh, uh, coder, you know, rock star, forgot about putting those guardrails. I don't think so. Even if you're being rushed, um, even if you're rushing this particular product because you're doing something that your boss is not telling you to do, uh, I'm still saying I, that, maybe yeah, I think I think there was a dialogue where there there was where they were saying that it's impossible for her to hurt. I think it was there. They just glossed over how she overrode it or something. So maybe it, it was there, but it, again, either way, either whether you're still you still have a point, whether it's there or not, they still. If it's not there, then it's a that's the hole. If it's there, and then they just yeah, they just throw throw away the gloss or like either the dog. How can the dog biting you and then the robot in the neck like? It's not even rewire all of your programming. Yeah. So. Yeah, because it's not even. Brain was here, so how can something here affect here? You yeah, know? Even if it's just like power or anything, the yeah, idea of it is um, it's shit. AI. That's I think if you're doing anything AI, that's kind of like the first thing that you want to teach it is to, you know, not take over the world. We've seen enough movies, but again, um, overall, that's the point of horror movies like this is to suspend. A little longer. some disbelief, right? But this is like a a, a a little, you know. There's more than a little disbelief here. Are mm-hmm. also the one thing that I really wanted to know is like, you know, I wish they talked a little bit about because like the tech is one thing. It's the power that I'm more than I'm more interested in. Like, imagine a a toy that walks and talks has Wi-Fi. Um, lifelike dances has super strength. Did, did they even say how it, how it was powered? Yeah, yeah. Did, uh, was he, it he, they didn't say it was powered. It just shows that every night she sits on this little pad at home to recharge. Okay, okay, I missed that. So I was just like, you know, that was like, you know, that I was just like, damn, like I concentrate on that tech. That tech should. I can't even keep my phone now. on on the whole day. How is? How is? I was saying, yeah, how but um, charged up. 
But overall, again, um, again, my last few thoughts before I turn it over to you is like, it's one of those things that B, B plus horror movies like Megan, um, you don't have to go super clean and super smooth in every particular detail of the movie. Just make sure that it's well paced, it looks well, and it makes sense. There's a few things that they didn't make sense, like the AI thing, like the battery thing, like the power thing. Like, you know, if you can make a robot this strong, you'd be doing other stuff, right? Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, but I'm just like looking at it, it's like, because I know it will take too much time to to explain it or too much time to justify it, they just skipped all over it and just like talked about it a little bit. So I prefer that than just like forcing That's certain true. Uh, too much it's like hey we're having fun here let's let's not um the eye on the price the prices were dicking around for an hour mm -hmm. an hour five right. minutes super short so i really enjoyed that so what are your like final thoughts and yeah you reading? now that you talked about, you said it like that it it makes sense you know um what matters most is to create the iconic villain or and they they did they did that and it's shot well right, after right, the uh, right. um there's a lot of creepy moments. I just I just wanted more more cool kills, because as as a uh, horror fan, you know I I want more. But hey, we're getting the sequel, so I'm sure they're gonna go bigger than that. Um, so final rating. Um, before the review, I was gonna go with the seven, but after talking about it, I'll go with a nice eight, maybe low eight, but still an eight. Yeah. Was, you know what? It was fun. We've been in line the past couple of weeks about a lot of stuff, but yeah, I'm at I'm at an eight two, and it, this is just primarily because there was it was a solid, entertaining hour, which is kind of hard to do, mm -hmm. right? Because like nowadays, an hour is a little too short for a movie, right? Or I mean, it too... it is ninety three percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Right, so they, I think this is a testament to amazing pacing of a particular movie. James Wan knows what he's doing, and you only get to this level of tightness if you've done a, a couple of really good ones. So you know, a lot of Bloomhouse, like the Annabelle series, the Nun series, those are those have been very popular. So I uh, give it a night. Okay, uh, so that is it for us. That's it for us. Thank you for watching. We have another uh, show to discuss, our weekly show, The Last of Us. There's only a couple of more episodes left. I am both <laughs> very, very excited. I cannot wait for my friends and family who hasn't, who has no idea about what happens in the game to watch the next few episodes. So, uh, but I'm also super torn that, you know, we're, we're going to have to end this. I don't want to, I don't want to see ever... what, what my wife thinks of the ending as well. Yeah. Um, but with that, Chabax, final goodbyes. Yeah, uh, thanks for joining us on this episode. And uh, yeah, catch us on The Last of Us and uh, our other shows. Yep. As what Chabax said, thank you very much for the view. We hope that you like and subscribe to our channel. We're also in all the socials, so you can interact with us. Uh, we are at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter with the handle at plus63hp. Please um you know join in the fun we will see you in all of our different shows and with that thank you very much and we'll see you in the next one